What's going on, good people? So there's a lot of stuff going on. And I I really prayed about if I should talk about it. Um, but I, I think that God um, has put a couple of different messages in my heart to speak about. And one thing it is, 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 is saying that it's, it's okay to be angry. It's okay to feel um, that you're tired of being taken advantage of. It's, it's okay to feel for your brother and sister um, that is less fortunate that, or that um, voices can't be heard because of um, them being killed. You know, one, one thing about it, the Bible is full of stories like that. God has used all the people in the Bible that have been oppressed to, to oppress those who, um, who was fighting um, his people. Habakkuk was one that, and I love that story of Habakkuk because it's very powerful because he challenged God. He, he went to God with, with about his struggles and, and I wrote, I wrote it down. So I want to read what I wrote so you can get an idea. Um, I try to summarize, summarize it much as possible. Um, but I challenge you to read the book of Habakkuk one, one and two is a short book. So I will read it. So, um, I'm going to title this, um, Be Angry, But Not Sin. Um, let me tell you about a man in Habakkuk. He addresses God with the struggles of seeing the injustice and the idolatry that was going on in the southern kingdom of Israel. He doesn't come out and accuse anyone. He just asks God, if he's good, why so much evil going on in the world? So he wrote in like a limit, uh, a, a lament term. I don't even know how to pronounce it, but it's like a like a poem style writing. Um, and it goes, it's back and forth with, with him and God. Um, and so Habakkuk sees that um, the violence and injustice is ruining Israel because of the corrupt leadership. Habakkuk, Habakkuk is on his knees crying out for the injustice. God answers him saying, I know, I got this, you know. God is letting Habakkuk know that he he is he's he's the sovereign God. He is there. He sees everything, but he's also uh, he, he also addresses that there's a there's a there's a time and a place uh, when he's going to use those same people um, against them. And so I know that's not comforting to a lot of people that don't really believe in the word of God. But for Christians, you can't you can't walk around saying that you're a Christian. And feeling the way you feel about people, the the uh, the evil that's in the world, and not understand that God got this. Because remember, in Ephesians six, it says we do not battle against the flesh and blood, but we have battle against the the unseen enemy, the principalities. The 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 what you don't understand, what people don't understand, is that Satan is the is the god of this world. He's the prince of this world. So he he's making these moving parts go the way they go because he wants to take our faith because he wants us to see like there's no future but you know Habakkuk being on his knees crying out um and and it, it's, it's so it so if you really think about it if you read um Micah and um and you read um Isaiah it's the same thing that was happening in those books with the people being treated unjust um, the same thing is happening today. A lot of a lot of people um, are being un, um, treated unjust. The, the the minority group, the black groups, are really being. It feels like we're being targeted. It feels like it feels like we are being treated just like in the uh, Babylon days, how they just treat people like animals. Like we're in fact, what's sad in the Babylon days, they treated people like animals, but here in America, they treat animals better than they do the people. And that's weird for me, and that's crazy for me, and it, and, it, and it breaks my heart, and it makes me angry. But it's a righteous anger, so that's the difference. We have to we have to be angry with the righteous anger. God was angry. It's okay to be angry, but but be angry in a righteous way. Because if you're angry in a righteous way, we can get things. We can we can turn things around in 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 a righteous way. Because being angry and reacting it it solves anything. Just pe more people die, more people get angry, more people you know. It's just it's it just it's not good. It's not good for us. Um, Songs thirty seven eight says, "Refrain from anger, and forsake wrath." Fret not yourself. It it only tends 
to only to evil. So it tends only to evil. So, so David is telling us that we, we have to be very careful at, at acting in anger and wanting to take matters in our only hand in our hands. We have to be very careful with that. And then James 1 20 says, for the ang anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. So when we, when we angry and we're tearing up stuff and we, and we're hurting each other th there, God is not even in it. God is nowhere around. Satan is just sitting back drinking his little Mai Tai or whatever drinks he liked to drink. And he's sitting here laughing at, look at all those people that will soon be down in hell with me because they are doing exactly what I want them to do. But Habakkuk wasn't really happy, happy with God's answer when God told him, I, I got this. So, so he said, he, so when God gave him the answer, Habakkuk said, listen, all, all Israel Israel is, is, is different in Babylon. Babylon is the worst. So Habakkuk is saying all those, all those other countries that you save is worse here because we tend to think it's worse when we're in it. It seems like it's the worst. It's the worst thing ever. It, you, you know, we, we always think our problems are the worst thing ever. You know, like our money problems, like our relationship problems, like any type of problem are, we think it's worse but he's human. This, this is the Bible of, of human beings account of the time that they spent in ancient, ancient times. So he's human, just like how we feel. We, we, we do feel like it's really worse. This, this is, we, we, we in the middle of this. So we feel like it's, it's, it's terrible. Just like when the COVID-19, a lot of people just felt like it was just the end. And, and even more so now people really feel like it's just the end. It's just like, everything's going wrong. It's not the end. So when he said that Babylon was worse, they treat animal, they treat humans like animal. God, God responds and says, start writing. And, and, and the reason why God start, told him to start writing, he said, there's a vision about an appointed time. He says, it may seem slow, but, but slow in my reaction, but the righteous will live by faith. God may use corrupt, God may use corrupt kingdoms, but he's not. He's not a proven, uh, uh, he's not a proven of the corrupt kingdoms, but he will use those corrupt kingdoms to turn the, the, the people of faith around on those corrupt kingdoms. Promise you, listen, he will do it. He would, he did it for them. He would do it for us. He does not endorse injustice. All nations are accountable to God's justice. Habakkuk prayers was more powerful than anything because when you read read uh, the, the book of Habakkuk, it's so powerful because his conversation back and forth and God God wants us to have those those tough conversations with him, saying why 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 does the why does the the rich and why does the the the, the um. The government seem like they're getting everything that they want. They have money, they have power. And why does it seem like the poor is always the last ones? God wants us to come to him in those in, in those types of needs because he has an answer for it. He has an answer. He has an answer why, why the injustice is happening to the people here in America, the 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 the, the, the poor people, the black people. The, the the less fortunate people, God has an answer, and I and I promise you that the oppressors will soon be pressed. Don't don't believe the hype. Don't get so focused on color more than the fact that we're God's children. That you 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 you're you're a believer. You're Christian first, then your then your color. You know, don't get so hung up on on the color of your skin more than more than the relationship with your God, because your relationship with God is going to get you through these hard times. Your relationship with God is going to be what's going to turn you on being the um, prey to turning you to being the predator, you know, but he wants to do it in, in a he wants you to do it in a righteous anger. There's a difference in anger. You can be mad. The, the Bible says, do not let the sun go down in anger. Do not let the sun go down in anger. He, 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 because, because, because it turns into something. It, when you let the sun go down in anger, it just turns into more than just anger because your mind start really meditating on why you're angry. He doesn't want you to let the sun go down in anger. He never said not to get angry. He doesn't want you to let the sun go down in anger. So be mad, be mad. It's okay to be mad, but don't tear up your neighborhoods. Don't, don't, don't loot the stores like, 
Like, really, what are you doing to Target by burning down a Target that's in your neighborhood? They may not even build another one. And then not only that, they wasn't making big sales because of the COVID-19. And now, now they got the insurance money that's going to pay for all of that stuff. What have you done other than put your people out of jobs that was working there? What have What are you doing... Um, you know, riding and tearing up other stores. You're not doing anything other than tearing up your na own neighborhood. So why do it? Why? Why? I, I understand, and and a lot of people warp mind. They feel like violence, no peace. That's the most ignorant thing ever. Because guess what? Throughout history, violence have never gotten peace. Violence has never gotten peace. What violence has done was had a whole generation of people disappear. Violence has done nothing but oppress a whole generation of people throughout the biblical times. So it's not about violence. It's it's all about being angry, standing up for your brother and sister, speaking, speaking out for your brother and sister without violence. It doesn't need violence. It says Proverbs 15, um, 15 verse one, a soft answer turns away the wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Why don't we understand that? Why are we not getting that part of that we we have to we have to be very tr strategic at the fight on injustice here in America. We have to do we have to be smart about, you know, how we spend our money. We have to make sure because our dollar is the most powerful dollar in in the absolute world. Black people, your money is powerful. Be be careful and spend it wisely because without your dollar, without your money, it doesn't make America spend because our, we spend money in a lot of places that honestly we shouldn't even be making rich, you know, and not just that. Here's, here's the thing, reason why we want to be angry and righteous. We as Christians are called to be peacemakers. Jesus Christ was a peacemaker. We, we're called to be peacemakers. Jesus Christ didn't use violence to make, to make peace. Matthew 5, 19 says, blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the sons of God. Are you a son of God? Are you a sister of God? Or, or do you do the deeds of your father, Satan? Ask yourself that. Are you poisoning people on your social media page with all this, this anger and bitterness? And what are you? Or what are you doing? You, are you stirring up the little, the little people that you have on your page, making them more angry? Then they, they're poisoning their family, their kids. And, and the kids are seeing how the parents and how we're reacting to it. And so they're going to build up anxiety. And guess what? This is going to be generation. Just like racism is taught, taught as, at birth, hate, anger is taught at birth. We got to do better, good people. We got to be peacemakers. We got to be peacemakers. I'm not a, I'm not asking the world to be peacemakers because they don't have any idea about peacemaking. But if you're a Christian, you have an idea of what being peacemaker is. Jesus Christ was a peacemaker. And he, every time they tried to kill him, every time they wanted to wanted to wanted to trap him, he was a peacemaker. Romans 12, um, 18, it says, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. It depends on us. Life is what we make it. We can live peaceful with white, brown, yellow. We can live peaceful. You know, if your circle of friends don't look colorful, then I think you're the racist. You know, if your circle of friends don't have a variety of different people that you can learn from and that you can you can teach and that you can show show different things to, I think you're the racist. You know, and, and also it says, also it says James 3, 17 through 18, but the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy, good fruits, impartial, sincere. The harvest of the righteous is sown in peace by those who make peace. Are you a peacemaker? Are you a troublemaker? I'm a peacemaker. I love my brothers and sisters. I'm going to fight for my brothers and sisters in prayer. I'm going to control where my dollar go. I'm going to make, I'm going to control where my vote go. I'm going to, I'm going to control what I can. I'm, I'm going to control what I can and what I can't control. It, I'm going to let God, I'm going to let go and let God. I'm a peacemaker. Are you a peacemaker? You're called to be a peacemaker. Have a good day.